So uh, I'm currently a consultant at Codership, but before this I co-founded MariaDB. I also worked at Pacona, and I also worked at MySQL until we exited. Please feel free to visit Codership in the at the booths. You might even get to win something fun. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but if you stamp yourself, you can win. So the color's a bit off, uh, unfortunately, because the projector is such. But uh, you know what is high availability for many people, and uh, you know in many other databases they tend to measure transactions per minute if you come from an Oracle world. But in the MySQL world, we really do care about transactions per second. That's what your throughput really is. We also obviously measure latency, which is the response time measured in percentiles. You all are running MySQL, so we do actually care for the D in ACID, which is the durability. We don't lose comet data uh, in any way, shape, or form. So we have replicas, snapshots, point-in-time recovery, backups. This is all part of high availability. And while I don't dedicate much slides to um, point-in-time recovery and backups, um, you do realize that uh, it, it is part of your HA solution if things go, go away and you may need to restore. And replication is also, of course, about redundancy. It's keeping the same copies of data to ensure that if one copy goes away, you have another. And the whole idea behind clustering is you will have some kind of monitoring set up, and you also have some uh, you know, very quick um, recovery uh, and failover. So the time the service is down is usually some kind of SLA you have, and um, that's how you want to ensure you have a good n no single point of failure either. So we have myriad solutions out there today. Um, you know, we have obviously got the Galera cluster, which includes um, MariaDB as well as Pacona XDB cluster. And we've got group replication with MySQL InnoDB cluster. Not sure if anyone's actually tried using that in production. It's been getting better every point release of MySQL. So MySQL 8 actually adds new features in every little point release, which makes it hard for someone like Facebook to merge. <laughs> Um, but it's great for um, users who want to get new features every you know, three to four months, especially with technology like InnoDB cluster, which is maturing every quarter, basically. Um, of course, we've got Linbit's DRBD, which is um, the D distributed replication block device. We also have failover frameworks like MHA, Orchestrator. We've also got the cloud with lots of uh, HA out of the box. And uh, we've also got these uh, amount of proxies that uh, you can actually utilize. My, and MySQL and MariaDB is supported reasonably well inside of uh, pretty much every cloud. Does anybody here use the cloud? Yes, OK. So uptime tends to be um, translated to uh, levels of availability. Many people want five nines worth of uptime. So they say they so that really means you only want like five minutes of downtime a year. That may not necessarily be um, possible for most installations unless you're willing to pay for it. And you're dealing with downtime at scale, so you're measuring in thousands of hours. So you know basically a simple failure should never trigger ops to come because you've got replicated copies of your data being served just fine. Regular async replication inside of MySQL or MariaDB, and I like to talk about modern versions of MySQL and MariaDB. So really, we are focusing on you know, 8.0, 28.9, MariaDB 10.6, and greater, right? Um, so you should be able to get 99.9, three times worth of uptime. The reason why you can't get more is because there's no automatic failover framework built in. But if you start having an automatic failover framework of some sort, typically you can detect a failure in you know, 10 second, less than 10 seconds and do a failover as well if you're using something like even semi-synchronous replication. SANs are really popular, uh, and they also provide, I would say, uh, approximately three nines worth of uptimes, um, also because that's maybe a single point of failure. Then there's the DRBD MHA op option. MHA can definitely give you, you know, higher than a three nines uptime. Um, and you've got the NDB cluster, Galera cluster, InnoDB cluster, which, you know, if, if you set it up according to how you would um, follow the documentation, that means, you know, three Galera nodes or uh, InnoDB cluster also. Uh, similarly, no, on a LAN, not in, you know, multiple geographic regions, maybe, you should be able to get five nines worth of uptime. 
Because once you set up a Galera cluster or an NDB cluster, or even NDB cluster, it tends to just stay running without issue. Um, NDB cluster, for example, actually powers a lot of uh, telcos. So every time you make a phone call and you, you know, the billing information is actually saved inside of uh, NDB. And also Galera, and eventually I presume in a DB cluster. So HA is totally about redundancy, right? We've had, um, you know, RAID for disks. We've had uh, clustering in case of uh, servers crash. We've got, usually got dual power supplies. We've got uh, multiple uh, network cards. You tend to have more than one geographical uh, data center. So, I'm, I mean, even if you use the cloud today, you have multi-region support. And uh, if you don't, you also have sometimes um, within uh, availability zones. And, you know, I think we, we all built that way too, right? If you have, you know, one kidney gone, you have uh, another spare. So, you know, there are huge amounts of disasters that can occur, right? So this is O'Reilly. They publish a lot of MySQL books and a, bunch, a whole bunch of other things, but they, they were down due to fires and power outages not long ago. And, you know, environmental failures, you've, you've had issues, um, you know, with regards to deliberate failures, people deleting data when they're, when they're unhappy with quitting their job or being told to quit their job. Uh, you have equipment failures, etc. And, you know, data centers can burn down even uh, to the, even if you are Samsung, for example, and you run a data center, your data center is not prone to not burning down. And, you know, when this data center did burn down, I was, happened to actually be in South Korea, and for one whole week, your American Express cards would not work because Samsung was the sole provider of, AIM, uh, of AMAX uh, in Korea. So, um, and of course, if you had one of those Samsung phones or smart TVs, they became fairly dumb. The phones had an S-Chat app. They stopped working, et cetera. And floods obviously occur um, as well. So you're aiming for high availability against lots of things. And there are lots of business con considerations, right? Your recovery time objective, your recovery point objective. You obviously have trade-offs when you're designing such a solution. You want offsite data storage. Um, you're thinking about the performance hits of having multiple data centers, for example. So, you know, if you have a Galera cluster in a local um, area network, three nodes, versus the performance hit that it will take when you have a Galera cluster, say, in uh, in Texas, in uh, in New York, and in London, the performance obviously would drop because you're writing across multiple geographies, right? So <clears throat> there are always trade-offs uh, when you're trying to gain maybe more high availability. <clears throat> but so you are really more or less um, building resilience into your infrastructure. That's the key here uh, when it comes to um, high availability solutions in the MySQL world. And you know, it is no surprise that MySQL has now been around since the mid 90s and it is, um, what, 27, 28 years old now. It's an extremely uh, robust piece of software. There's been lots of software that comes around from it as well. How many of you are running your MySQL with um, sync bin log equals zero or an NDB flush transaction at commit equals zero? Anybody? Oh, okay, good. So you're all running at NDB flush transaction at commit equals one, sync bin log equals one, yes? <laughs> so it turns out that you know, before we could get this thing called group commit in the binary log, a lot of people would turn this off, um, mostly because they thought that it, would, it could actually get writes faster. So you didn't call fsync each and every time. But group commit allows you to group commits together and call fsync, uh, you could say maybe once every three commits or more. But it, and it'll still be written in a transactional way to guarantee the ACID compliance uh, without any issue. Um, so no one should be running without these options any longer. This is true now also for MariaDB as, as it is for MySQL. In fact, MySQL has upped the game by changing the defaults such that you have sync bin log equals one in MySQL 8. Quick show of hands, how many are running MySQL 8? Five, seven? Five, six? 
MariaDB? 10.6? 10.4, OK. OK, so n not, not the latest. Uh, so a subset of you are running the latest. So hopefully, you're all thinking of upgrading to 8.0 and 10.6. Uh, 10 6 is supported for five years. 8 0 is supported, has been around now for like, I think, four years already. So I'd say it's fairly robust and it's time to upgrade if you can. HA is definitely harder for databases because you can't just say, mm, I'd like to rsync the data directory because the data directory is constantly being written to. Uh, so your harder resources need to be redundant, but also your data needs to be redundant and it's constantly changing data. So you really want high availability without having to restore a new backup server. So you want this to be uninterrupted, hence lots of replicas. So there's this idea of redundancy through shared storage. And you know, it also affects you if your redundancy through shared storage happens to be, oh, I'm running a virtualization, say VMware, and I'm keeping everything on my SAN. If I pull out the SAN and my three node Galera cluster is running there, goodbye. It's gone. Um, so this, this obviously would be your single point of failure. And there's also failover time in a SAN. That's not actually, um, it's not actually instantaneous. DRBD is the distributed replication block device. And it definitely requires some sort of Linux configuration. So if you are a DBA, you may also have to ping your Linux admin. It is synchronous. It really just keeps a copy on the primary and on the secondary writing um, across the network. It tends to be uh, ha in ensuring that your second set of data is actually inaccessible for use because it's a passive server. So lots of people set it up such that you have, uh, the, you have it going two ways. So it is, it is an active and a passive for one instance, and an active and a passive for the other instance. But there's also um, failover time that takes um, time. And there's also um, higher average latency. So in lots of benchmarks that we've done, your worst case compared to single node performance uh, is up to 60%. You can actually try this out. Does anybody use RDS MySQL? All right. So if you try RDS MySQL with um, uh, multiple availability zones, measure the performance of a single node RDS and a second availability zone, or one with just a uh, a secondary or slave. And you'll actually notice the performance difference is quite significant when you use multi-AZ. And uh, the reason is largely because uh, it had DRBD underlying, underlying it. Also why it's only about half the cost. So you know, redundancy through MySQL replication is, uh, is extremely useful. Um, you have got MySQL replication in 8.0. I'd say it's you know, fairly robust. Uh, it's also, you've got MariaDB server replication. And I, I've mentioned that in two different lines, mostly because, um, as you may guess, both replications are actually different. <laughs> so if you have a MySQL 8 uh, second, uh, primary, you can't just attach a MariaDB secondary to it any longer. So I'm also going to use the term primary and secondary and master and slave fairly interchangeably because we're obviously changing the terms and deprecating old um, statements. But it is um, taking time even for my head to come around. Hmm? Yeah, it, it, you know, it's not the first time I felt it. I presume it's not like an earthquake, right? This is Austin, you don't? Yeah, so I mean, what are the chances we bring an earthquake? Minuscule. Yeah. Then there's, of course, Galera cluster with several variants of it. Pacona has a huge amount of customers on Pacona XDB cluster. There's also MariaDB Galera cluster. There are actually a lot of Pacona XDB cluster talks throughout this event. <clears throat> no MariaDB Galera ones, unfortunately. There's no NDB cluster talks here. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it is uh, you know, a valid, valid product. Uh, it is very much around being developed. Um, you obviously just remember that when you want high availability, your storage requirements are, of course, multiplied, and you have huge potential for scaling out. For many of you who came in um, later, the, these colors don't look this bad, I promise. It's the projector that's 
screwing around with the colors. So you've got three different types of uh, replication. And I throw in the virtually synchronous Galera cluster with MySQL InnoDB cluster as well. And you know, asynchronous is extremely fast. I think it's what you all set up. You, it's easy to use. It's, um, it doesn't guarantee any secondary actually gets a commit, but it is super fast. Semi-synchronous uh, guarantees at least one secondary in the entire chain gets said commit. So it's a little slower because it has to commit to another uh, to yet another machine, but it's not really a huge loss. In fact, that's lo lossless semi-sync, which is present in 5.7 and 8.0 and newer versions of MariaDB, is how your web scale companies are more or less run today with MySQL. So that's, that's a huge bonus. And then there's, of course, the virtually synchronous Galera or InnoDB cluster, uh, which is multi-master replication um, built in, basically. But InnoDB cluster has some nice front ends, right? You have a, you know, a, a nice router built in. You have a nice way to um, communicate with your entire cluster and configure it using the MySQL shell. Has anybody actually deployed or used an InnoDB cluster before? All right, only one. Do you like it? Yes, yes it's nice, right? It's fast. It uses a different port, port 33060, not just port 30 any longer. It's got this nice option called clone, which I'll talk about later. Anybody here, here use the clone plugin before? No. Yeah. <laughs> so for the rest of you on 8.0, by the way, the clone plugin is well worth taking a gander at as well. So MySQL has, as I said, has had replication since 5.0, five, five basically, 4.1 four, four, four even to some extent. It's always been statement-based generally, um, but row-based used for unsafe statements. But then MySQL switched the default for row-based replication in 5.7 and 8.0. So my presumption is all of you now are on row-based replication, correct? Nobody's using statement-based replication. Mixed. Mixed. Okay, so default MariaDB or? Uh, yeah, MariaDB uh, 10.3. Oh, okay, yeah. So MariaDB in 10.2 actually for some reason, decided the best default was to go mixed mode replication. There, there frankly, is not. I don't like it. I, I, would, yeah. I would rather just go full row. Full row, yeah. There's frankly not much benefit. And because the MariaDB actually builds in multiple replication, in MySQL, they're replication plugins for semi sync and also for Galera. But for MariaDB, they're all actually built in. So you can actually turn on Galera just by typing WS red mode equals on. And if you're using mixed mode, you're going to, you're going to realize that you know, you're going to have Galera fail for you. So it's, I, I think it's not a good default, but you know, so be it. So, you should, so if you're a MariaDB user, the first thing you do is you actually say you'd like to use row-based replication today. And if you're worried about space, et cetera, or, or, or not seeing the statement, guess what? MariaDB has the ability to annotate the binary log with, row with, with events. So if you're using row-based replication, you can still see the statement on the top. And you know, oh, now you're worried my bin log is, is growing larger because I'm seeing the statement and the binary log. Don't worry, that's binary log compression for you. So multiple ways for you to you know, um, switch to row if you're still thinking statement or mix is a good idea. So asynchronous is, as I said, the default and it's extremely fast. And semi-synchronous is a plugin since 5.5, has been improved in 5.7 and 8.0 to include this lossless semi-sync. And it is actually built into MariaDB for what it is worth. So in MySQL, you actually have to load plugin um, in MariaDB. You just configure it because the plugin's already there. And then there's, of course, the idea of fully virtual synchronous replication between, um, again, Galera cluster, as I said, is built into MariaDB. But if you download Percona server, if I, I presume many of you use Percona server as well to some extent, you also realize there's something else called Percona XDB cluster. So that's yeah, another product. And then I've, I've only specified group replication. I didn't say InnoDB cluster for a reason. It's because actually the, the protocol inside is it's called group replication, right? InnoDB cluster is this product on top of it that in, involves the shell. It involves um, the router as well. So it's like a superset product. Hmm? 
Yeah, all via the shell, yeah. So it's, it's very nicely configured. But group replication itself has a lot of this built in. Like if a node goes away, it can automatically rejoin, for example, in MySQL 8. I, I have a slide for that. So semi-sync, as I mentioned, has been used at scale at Facebook since at least 2014. And, and probably a bit earlier because you know Yoshinori Matsunobo actually wrote this blog post in 2014. Um, so basically a thread that performs a transaction commit on the master will, will block after the commit is done and will wait until at least one semi-sync slave acknowledges that it has received all events of the transaction or until said timeout occurs. And there really is no more risk of phantom reads because it only acknowledges transactions uh, after it's written to the relay log and then flush the disk. Who here uses semi-synchronous replication? <laughs> OK, well, yes. <laughs> so for the rest of you, um, if you're still stuck on asynchronous, this may be an extremely good option, especially if you have a failover framework in front. In fact, there will be a talk, I believe, not after this, but after that, on how uh, someone's using MHA orchestrator, maybe proxy SQL to some extent, to actually do um, built-in failovers. I, I highly recommend you also check that one out. The reason why I mention you check that out is because software like MHA hasn't been updated in a while, but is used a lot. And if you're going to use semi-sync, you probably want some kind of automated failover framework. And then Orchestrator, as I mentioned, is, uh, well, I will mention later, is slowly going down the path of potential abandon abandonment because the primary author is, is busy with other real work. But it's also extremely useful tool. And I presume it will have a fairly good lifespan, even this year, next year. So this year, I think it's an it's a extremely valid choice. Anybody use Orchestrator, by the way? All right. Happy with it? Yeah, it's got a nice GUI. Does fail over it. Just works. So you know, I think MySQL started becoming extremely interesting um, in 5.6 onwards. You know, we started getting global transaction IDs, which were very similar to what Galera's global transaction IDs look like. And in parallel, MariaDB had gained the global transaction IDs as well, maybe a little bit before 5.6. All your servers have UUIDs. You have the ability to do uh, filtering. Um, Multi-threaded slaves. I, I, are you all using multi-threaded slaves? Have you set that up? It's been around for a while. You know, you have multiple CPU cores nowadays. You should make use of them. Also, this will ensure you don't have this uh, problem of slave lag or secondary lag. Um, group commit arrived. In fact, it might have only been, you know, 10% 10 per 10 performance difference from um, what was available in MariaDB. And the reason why I can say this is because Pacona ported the MariaDB patch initially into Pacona server, the first actual shipping server to have group commit in the binary log. And then Pacona eventually got rid of it because the performance gains weren't, weren't you know, worthy for you to also have the engineering diff in Pacona server. So it just went with standard MySQL. Uh, the binary log and the real logs became crash safe. Time delayed replication started appearing as well. So it allowed you to actually have a replica could, that could be delayed maybe by you know, an hour, minutes, et cetera and per database parallel replication arrived. So has anybody used start transaction with consistent snapshot to take backups? Oh. So basically, you get binary log positions that are consistent with uh, InnoDB transaction snapshots. It's uh, useful to obtain logical backups uh, with the correct positions without having to run flush tables with read lock. And the binary log position is basically obtained by uh, newly implemented variables like uh, bin log snapshot file and uh, bin log snapshot position. So you start the transaction with start transaction with consistent snapshot. You have these variables providing you the bin log uh, position corresponding to the state of the database. And uh, irrespective of which other transactions have been committed since the snapshot was taken. And Pacona, of course, keeps on extending it. So you also have the ability to do this by session ID. And also, you have got fairly good backup locks inside of InnoDB, uh, sorry, ExtraDB. So your InnoDB version also, I guess, kind of matters to some extent. Pacona has ExtraDB, which is MySQL's InnoDB, 
with a bit more um, extensions. MariaDB has InnoDB that is no longer a, a direct implementation of what you get from MySQL, neither is it a direct implementation of what you get from Percona. ExtraDB was removed after 10.2. Now it's its own InnoDB. So MariaDB actually has a third InnoDB, it calls itself InnoDB, but it's not the same. So, so well, well worth noting. And uh, this, of course, works consistently between transactions involving more than one storage engine. How many of you here use more than one storage engine besides InnoDB? Myrox, OK. <laughs> How many of you use another storage engine besides InnoDB, besides the Myrox user? <laughs> Anybody? So everybody's InnoDB. Anybody using MyIZAM? All right, good. That's a, that's a good crowd, because MyIZAM and a lot of these things that we talk about, MyZem may, may not necessarily benefit from, right? MyZem is a good reason why you may have replication, and then things go out of sync later. Correct, and then in 10.4, well, actually, it, correct. And you can actually manipulate the grant, even though it's stored in, in MyZem, it's still manipulatable. <laughs> via um, SQL statements that will actually like even replicate in, say, a Galera cluster. Wow, now I'm feeling it even more. <laughs> I don't know. It's the first time I'm feeling it in this room. I've been here before. Right, so lots of people walking, right? Heavy human beings. <laughs> All right. Um, so I know one of you said you're using Tungsten Replicator before. And they actually started with multi-source replication inside of Tungsten. Though I guess you know, maybe after this talk, you're, you're mig it's a migration plan from Tungsten Replicator um, to some extent. Um, multi-source was first present there. And it, it first made its way into MariaDB via a Taobao contribution. And then My MySQL also implemented it. Um, and I can tell you that now in MySQL 8 and MariaDB 10.6, even the syntax has started matching because MariaDB has made it compatible with like, the understanding of channels that you get in multi-source replication inside of um, MySQL that is also now available inside of MariaDB. So um, I do think you should use, obviously, the, the newer stuff, but always note that there are syntax changes. So if MariaDB gets a feature first, MySQL will ensure that said feature will have a different syntax. And then MariaDB in a later release will have to make uh, amends to some extent. So in 5.6, you would have to shut down all your servers at once to enable global transaction ID. This is, of course, an uh, awful thing to do. Um, the, the good engineers at Facebook figured out how to turn this on um, automatically with some additions to the uh, 5.6 tree, such that MySQL 5.7 also followed, followed suit. And uh, you can now enable your global transaction ID without this shutting down all your servers inside of uh, MySQL. MariaDB did not suffer from this. But it's worth noting that GTIDs are not on by default. You'll have to turn them on if you'd like to use them. If you're having MySQL and MariaDB together or trying to migrate from one, one to another, turning on GTIDs will cause you more misery. So I advise against it if you're planning to, to make said migration. One, the, one can't read the other. So I initially, um, my um, parallel replication in 5.6 was per database, and then in um, MariaDB was per table. And it keeps on, you know, as I said, getting better. So if we are using a modern version, uh, MariaDB, for example, has turned on parallel replication with the optimistic mode by default in 10.6 and greater already. Basically, you can automatically detect non-conflicting uh, row-based events by comparing the primary keys and executing these in parallel. So you really find that these um, secondaries are moving fast. In MariaDB, there's this idea of a domain ID. You can have multiple domains, and you can actually potentially even get the um, 
secondary running you know as fast if not f faster than the master how would it be faster than the master if his one secondary happened to have multiple multi-source um, prim primaries MySQL in 5.7 um, of course as I said earlier alluded to gave you the ability to have online GTID migration uh, this I think is extremely useful because you kind of want to do this um, in an online fashion. You also did not have to turn on log slave updates if you wanted to have GTID replication. This actually helps save, save disk space a lot. The ability for having GTIDs in the OK packet meant that proxy SQL could make use of it as well. Strangely, this is missing in MariaDB for what it is worth. Uh, you also now have interest schema uh, parallel replication. Um, your Show slave status, for example, is now non-blocking. You can tune group commit uh, with uh, the sync delay as well as the sync no delay counts. There's full XA support. Um, and by default, now you had bin log format equals row and sync bin log equals one in 5.7. This means that Oracle already thinks MySQL is ready for you to use group commit in the binary log. What is show slave status now? Um, when you used to run show slave status, they used to be they used to be blocking. When you ran it across, uh, when you when you ran it, it blocked it blocked the thread. So it was so now it's non block. It was it's completely non blocking. Um, eight zero got us multiple replication channel filters for multi source binary log. Basically, now has atomic DDLs. So this atomic DDL statements are basically combine your data dictionary updates. As you know, there was lots of changes in the 8.0 data dictionary. All your storage engine operations and the binary log writes associated with all your DDL ops into a single atomic operation. So it's either committed uh, or not, or rollback. And um, even if the server halts during said operation, so now your, your binary log is atomic in 8.0. So this is a, another good reason to potentially upgrade. Um, previously, replication monitoring would fail if your disk was full. You might ask yourself, why is your disk full? But this is actually a real scenario. Disks get full. So you, you will actually be able to still continue having uh, replication stats, even if it can't be written any longer to said disk. Server version <laughs> now kept inside each transaction in the binary log. This is actually one of the main reasons why you can't have a MySQL 8 master and a MariaDB secondary any longer. Because <laughs> uh, you'd have to you know, parse out each and every. You can't parse it out of the binary log because it's, it's binary. <laughs> so it would ab absolutely break. <laughs> so MariaDB was fully able for you to migrate to MariaDB before now, now you can't. <laughs> now you do a dump and restore. In fact, uh, there was a goodbooking.com talk yesterday and today on how they, they migrated from MariaDB to MySQL. And uh, they didn't obviously do it in an online replica only fashion because it, it's very complicated going back and forth. So for all intents and purposes, it's two different databases. How many of you use the performance schema? All right, good. So PS, um, you know, initially had performance issues in like 5.6, improved in 5.7, in 8.0. Nobody complains about the performance implications any longer. People just use it. In fact, even MariaDB has implemented the performance schema from um, more modern MySQLs. So you actually have more um, ability to look at performance schema for getting things like queue monitoring and so forth. Anybody use encryption data at rest with MySQL or MariaDB? No? OK. Well, if you ha happen to do it, the binary log caches do get encrypted now as well. Previously, you had pretty much everything encrypted except the Gcache and the bin log cache. Now the cache is encrypted too. Um, group replication, as at least one of you has, has tried, has auto rejoin, checksums, etc. And I think that maybe the most interesting thing is the clone plugin for me is that um, 
it didn't come in the initial release of 8.0. It came in like, I don't know, 8.0, 16, 17, 18, or something. But it allows you to clone um, your data locally of, or from a remote MySQL instance. It's basically a physical snapshot of your data stored at UNDB, schemas, tables, uh, table spaces, et cetera, data dictionary. And the clone data will give you a fully functional data directory. Um, so you can actually use this for, for provisioning. It's kind of like an rsync of your data directory, but a consistent rsync. Anybody use clone? Only one person, right? Yes. So I, I highly recommend you investigate clone if you're in, on 8.0. In fact, Galera, if you want to do a state snapshot transfer, normally requires you to use something like extra backup or Maria backup or rsync. Now in 8.0, Galera makes use of clone as well. So you have this option of clone SST, and it is the fastest way to provision a Galera cluster now. So clone is a great way for you to um, provision new databases in MySQL. There is no equivalent of clone in MariaDB, but I can only imagine it comes in due time. Extremely useful tool. Highly recommend you take a, a gander at the documentation. Also, fair to say that if it, say, got introduced in 8.0.17, now it's 8.0.28 or 9, improvements happen across every point release, nearly every other point release. So presumption is always using the newest, latest. The 8.0 also introduced binary log, uh, bin log, expired log seconds. So it was actually present in the GA in 2017. And MariaDB actually only introduced this option in 2021. So that's five year delay for something that may, may interest some people. And I know some of you shake your head, but to be fair, MariaDB gave you compressed binary logs um, in 10.2. 10.2 is about to be obsolete this month. Uh, and it's got a five year support cycle. And this actually only appeared in um, 8020 uh, in April of 2020 for MySQL. So sometimes you get a cool feature in MariaDB first, sometimes you get a cool feature in MySQL first. It's up to you to start um, annoying your vendor of choice for them to start porting these cool features over. Um, Percona is actually extremely good with um, porting stuff over if you are a paying customer. So that's an added bonus. Sometimes it, it does get out of sync. Um, you know, sometimes people have a, a master in MyISM, a slave in UNODB. Another common one we, we, we've seen but have not really seen many deadlocks is a master in UNODB and a slave in MyROX with compression turned on. Um, um, sometimes you encounter bugs. Now with MySQL having um, changes every point release in 8.0, you should be uh, you know, noting that you may encounter replication bugs as you upgrade. How many of you use uh, Pacona Toolkit? OK, that's nearly all of you. Have you so I presume you use PT Slay Find. Anybody use PT Table Checksum and PT Table Sync? All right. So read the documentation carefully, because it does make invasive changes. Um, actual live changes. And if you have out of sync databases, this is like a great way to help you um, sync stuff. So, Galera cluster, um, fully inside of uh, my, uh, inside MySQL, it's a replication plugin basically. It's only for transactional storage engines like InnoDB, but in MariaDB 10.6, it also now works for ARIA and MyISM. Um, it's vir virtually synchronous does automatic node provisioning. You tend not to have any slave lag. It's got lots of users like Greets migrated from Oracle Rack, uh, HP, OpenStack recommends it, Mercado Libre, PagerDuty, et cetera. It uses a quorum algorithm, so it requires a minimum of three nodes. So if you set it up with two nodes, you're asking for failure, so maybe don't do that. Um, uses optimistic concurrency control as well. Galera 4. Um, came out some time ago. So Percona Server 8, PXC8, as well as MariaDB 10.6 has this. You have the ability to do streaming replications. So holding large, uh, any transaction larger than, say, 2 gigabytes can now actually work in chunks in a Galera cluster. Uh, it's got um, new metadata tables as well, some new functions to handle 
writes that replication in your app. And uh, there's actually, right after this talk, a Galera cluster state, state of the union that you, you, know, you could attend if you're interested in Galera cluster information overall. So typically, this diagram would, appear, would appeal for your Galera or InnoDB cluster because you can read and write to any node. It has automatic node provisioning. Um, each node obviously has identical data and the replication is virtually synchronous. And InnoDB cluster also runs across a wide area network just like Galera does. So the designs are extremely similar, just that they're being developed by two different teams. One's been around for longer than the other, etc. cetera. Percona adds extra gravy on top of it with PXC8 because it also bundles proxy SQL. Does anybody use proxy SQL? All right. The rest of you, you've heard of proxy SQL, I presume. Yes, OK. Um, it's also integrated with PMM, uh, Percona Monitoring and Management. Also worth looking at if you are going to you know, um, want to monitor your replication topologies. You've got all the MySQL features. Um, but you also include some early features like this non-blocking operations um, for online schema changes. And Percona adds the added gravy of a Kubernetes operator as well. Does anybody use Kubernetes? Wow. Um, group replication, you know, started off with a variant of Paxos protocol, Manicus, which supported multiple leaders. Then they, you know, basically turned on SSL by default. Then they said, hey, you know, we need different TLS versions. Then they decided to say you should have single primary mode uh, as a default. But eventually, right, like today, today I, I can say that you can actually have a combination of group replication. MySQL router and uh, shell to make more or less magic. Um, and there was a very good talk, unfortunately it's already passed, uh, on the evolution of the MySQL database system from single instance to multi-region disaster re recovery by Frederick Descamps. Anybody went to that yesterday maybe? Yep, go, go check out those, um, the, the video recording if you're interested in InnoDB cluster because you know, by, by default if you use MySQL shell, you have the idea of an InnoDB cluster set, which is like your regular replication, and you've got InnoDB cluster full on, which is basically a Galera cluster that you configure via MySQL shell. And um, it's, it's just been getting better and better every point release. So, um, and I'm not kidding about the every point release part. Don't really want to spend much time on NDB cluster because um, it's very, very niche. It's not InnoDB which is, I guess, the biggest problem for why it's also um, not commonly used. Uh, requires a five-node setup at minimum. No, you want the management node, the two SQL nodes, two data nodes, so that's five. <laughs> for high availability. <laughs> that's true. Correct. In the same host. Yeah, a, a very minimal setup would be three but it won't give you that high availability that you want. It's like many people who come to me and say, we want a highly available Galera setup, but we only have budget for two nodes. <laughs> yeah, so if you want HA, you must give an equivalent budget for HA. So how do you handle failure? You can do polling, monitoring, alerts. So, you know, Percona monitoring and management, for example, can definitely give you information that, hey, look, I've, I, I, I'm noticing problems or I have fa failures. There are other, other tools like Vivid Cortex. They'll tell you, look, there are definitely you know, issues going on. Um, usually then ping something like get Nagios to text you and so forth. Uh, then you need to figure out what you want to do about it. And you also want to make sure you're pr uh, protecting data integrity. And in all cases, you want to make sure you don't have split brain, right? So if you set up, again, group replication in a DB cluster or Galera cluster properly, you should have no split brain. But you can set it up such that you ignore split brain and then have data drift. And guess what? There's no way to merge data in MySQL easily. So you could be writing to two independent stores and then figuring out how to roll it back, either using MySQL, using the MySQL bin log flashback in MariaDB or you know, manually replaying the bin log if you like. Orchestrator 
is you know started off at Outbrain, so this is like an extremely rare screenshot because that's where it initially started. Then it went on to Booking.com, GitHub, and finally Shlomi himself now works at uh, PlanetScale and has more or less decided to stop um, updating it because he's got a lot of commitments. And but uh, you know I still believe it's going to be useful for you because you can visualize your application problems, review and kill long-running queries. And it's still an extremely valid piece of software that works today. So uh, I would definitely take a look at it. MHA as well. Um, specialized solution for MySQL replication. Definitely use SemiSync. You can use it in conjunction with other solutions, including Orchestrator. It can do automated and manual failover options. Um, it's Perl based, fairly easy to set up. You can be tested and, you know, getting going in you know less than 20 hours for sure, including testing of and, and restores. Works with MariaDB as well. When it comes to proxies, MySQL of course recommends router. MariaDB recommends this thing called MaxScale. Percona recommends proxy SQL. Proxy SQL of course works with all the servers. My only two cents about MaxScale is MaxScale initially decided to give you this thing called time delayed open source where you where it switched the license to this thing called business source license. Um, and then they changed it even further to state that the license work can't be used with less than three servers for any purpose, so you can't even use it for testing, demoing, etc., unless you pay for pay, pay for a license. So <clears throat> my opinion over uh, on MaxScale is, of course, maybe you want to avoid it. Anybody using MaxScale? Okay, that answers it. Uh, Proxy SQL, great software, released in the same year as MaxScale initially, and um, I would say. Um, can do lots of things, including reloads. Uh, in 5.7 onwards, Percona included um, proxy SQL admin tool. 8.0 has it as well. Disconnection pooling, multiplexing, read write splits, shards, caching, rewriting, etc. Galera host groups, group replication, in DB cluster as well. Monitoring built in, all SQL statement based, runtime reconfigurable. Extremely useful piece of software by DBAs for DBAs. Highly recommend you check out Proxy SQL version two. There's also a one branch, but the two branches is, is, is better. How does that scale to MySQL routers? MySQL routers, we comparatively very basic to, to Proxy SQL, but if you wanted the simplest of InnoDB clusters, it is the easiest to set up. But if you want real power, Proxy SQL is where it's at, but you can't use the shell to set it up. You'll use Proxy SQL at admin, which is like MySQL, way more powerful, plenty of talks. In fact, today there, there's a talk of proxy SQL every hour, I think, till the end. Highly recommend you go check some out. Now, clouds, um, you know, um, Amazon serves lots of RDS. They've got their own. If you use um, availability zones, you using DRVD. Otherwise, they, have, they do have replicas. They do have Aurora, which strips out replication, but gives you, but Stripe, but writes to like six different backends. Um, they support, you know, pretty much the best, right? They've got MySQL 5, 6, 7, 8, including MariaDB 10, 6, and they have MariaDB 10, 6 with MyRox. So not only do you have InnoDB, you also have RoxDB as a storage engine in RDS now. This is the, this is pretty cool. Google Cloud has been supporting only MySQL till 8.0. Azure, also up to 8.0, different availability model because it's using Windows HA on the underlying base host. Never seem to have updated MariaDB, so one could presume it's abandonware. Alibaba also has RDS as well as Oracle Cloud. Now, Oracle is very interesting because lots of MySQL extensions are going into this Heatwave platform, so might want to take a look at it. There are plenty of enterprise editions of software, including several lines cluster control, which is extremely useful for co deploying and configuring your clusters, as well as like HA proxy, proxy SQL, all via GUI. There's including, there, there, there are things like Continuum and Tungsten to some extent that's still very much a product, but not, no longer the Tungsten replicator that, that was open source and you're fam you may have been familiar with. And many people have obviously got uh, enterprise editions of software. And in our almost over in terms of time, uh, where, where are some things now? As I said, MySQL's been around for more than 25 years. Previously, we had this, this idea of slave prefetching with replication booster. Now, intraschema parallel replication will solve for it. 
No, no longer do you need to warm up your buffer pool with InnoDB fake changes. You don't really use tungsten replicator, the open source version, any longer. There's, but the product is still around. Some of you may have been familiar in 5.6 with this product called MySQL Utilities that had MySQL failover built in, but now fully replaced with Shell and InnoDB cluster. And then MySQL MMM was the initial proto pro prototypical way to do multi-master replication, also completely abandonware now because you've got Galera and InnoDB cluster. I highly recommend you take a gander at PMM. I don't know how many of you look at Replication Manager, but this is actually developed by a couple of ex-MariaDB folk, still very much uh, going. And you need backups. I mean, I don't think there's a single backup talk uh, here per se, but extra backup, Maria backup is a fork of extra backup, but different, runs on Windows, for example, even, and, and works with encrypt encryption and so forth. My dumper, useful. MySQL shell, surprisingly also useful because it's got MySQL dump replacements, can do things in parallel just like MyDumper can. So in conclusion, I highly recommend you to use replication. Um, note that MySQL and Pocono server are not the same as MariaDB server, and this is going to keep on changing. Uh, Galera cluster, or PXC or MGC work. InnoDB cluster, extremely interesting piece of kit. Proxy SQL, good. Orchestrator with caution, though I suspect this year, next year, it's, it's still going to be good. And when eventually people need more, they will just you know, start updating it. Check out Codership um, at your booth. Go win something. I think it's a, maybe it's an Apple Watch or something. And uh, you know, with that, I'd say thank you for listening. Um, we, we're a little over time, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them before the next um, talk comes in. So thank you for listening. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> or you're running to the next talk. <laughs> you can also email me, and I'll, the slides will be up online if you email for slides. <laughs>